it's a it's good to be here today. I know uh, I know Friday night and then last night and then today. Uh, I think I say this a whole bunch. You'll probably get me tired, get tired of hearing me say this, but but every time we come to the church house, we uh, we see these brothers and sisters and these little ones, and uh, something inside of us just starts to beat a little bit harder, a little bit faster, and it feels so good. And uh, and I tell you, we can't do this without you. There's, we need everybody. We need everybody in this this church house, and we need the Christians, the brothers and sisters, to lift one another up. I know certainly y'all lift me up. I know, I know there's times that we're out in the world and we struggle with things, and but there's something about it. I can't explain it. I don't know. I try my best today, but with the with the help of the Lord, I'll try. But, I, but I'll tell you, there's something about it that that we come together. It just feels good, right. and that spirit it, it jumps breast to breast, and I'm so thankful for that today. Yeah. And my mind today is uh, it's been upon the. You know, been thinking about where Jesus, where He was hanging on that cross, and and uh, you know, just like us, sometimes we're out in the world and we see things that hurt us. But but you know, um, Jesus, as He was hanging on that cross, His brothers and sisters too, our brothers and sisters, were there and they and they and they watched Him hang on that cross, and and then He died and He went down, and but He was He was raised up by our Father. He was raised up and. And the thing is, is I couldn't help, I couldn't imagine being there, the apostles, and if I were to be one of them, and, and they were saddened at that time, were they not? You know, and, and I look at our lives today where we, sometimes in this world, we're, we're brought down, but then we're brought back up. Yeah. You know, and I'm thankful for that today. I think in Acts 2, it talks about this, where, where this, uh, these apostles, they, they uh, were told to go to Jerusalem, to an upper room, and they went to upper room, and they were supposed to tarry there for a little bit. And and I'll tell you today, the Christians sometimes they don't want to tarry too long. And, and when I started to do this, um, this brother here would tell me just to tarry, just a little bit, just a little bit. And and the, the spirit will come, and he'll start to fill you up, will it not? And and it filled up that house, that house there where they they were all together in one accord. And and listen, I tell you today, it's the, it's the best thing to be in one accord. And I pray that each one of you start to get your mind set on Jesus. And the thing is, if there's somebody lost here today, they'll feel that spirit come down and they'll know that something is is just a little different. Something feels just a little bit good right now, just like I feel. I can feel it on me now. And and listen, this is carrying over from last night. I know I was sitting there and and I don't know what I'm going to tell you today, but I'm telling you, I was sitting there, and, and I was sitting there, and somebody came, and they started washing my feet and singing the song. And I'm telling you, it humbled me from the very, very depths of my soul when it felt so good. And, and I started to have those tears come to my eyes. And, and I tell you, those tears, it just, it humbled me, and it made me feel so good. And this brother started to sing, and I looked up, and I saw this brother up here, and he was just glowing up here, and it felt so good to see that kind of thing. And, and listen, I'm telling you today, it's the best thing ever to have Jesus in your life. Amen. It's the best thing to, to turn your life over to Him. I know Saul was walking down the road one day with God, and this is before he became Paul. And Saul was walking down this road, and I tell you, he, he kept on walking, and he thought that he was going to a place to persecute the Christians. He wanted to throw them all in jail. But there was another plan, and this plan I'm so thankful for today. If it wasn't for this plan, we wouldn't be That's here right. today. Right. Right. But I'm telling you today that I'm so thankful that Saul was walking down this road, and, and this, this bright light came to him, and, and this bright light was Jesus. And Jesus asked him, he said, why thou do you persecute me? And I marveled at that, but the other day yeah. I was reading, and it says that why do you try to kick against the pricks? And I, and I started, to, and I sat there, and that hit me in a certain way. And, and I said, oh, Lord, what does this mean? Why do you want to kick against the pricks? Why, Saul? Why, Saul, are you doing this today? And friend, I tell you, I was like that, too. I was like that, too. I was fighting against the good that was given to us. 
I was fighting against it. And I'm sure this brother here, he was yeah. fighting against sure. it. But I'm telling you today, when we start to stop kicking against the pressure, what does that mean? What does that mean? Amen. Well, it's just like this. There's a, there's, there could be an animal going out. I'm not much of a shepherd. I'm not much of a farmer. But I'll tell you this, that there's, a, there's an animal that goes out and they take this, they'll take this little, little prick and, and they'll, they'll prick it. And they push that animal from right to left and they keep it on a path. Yeah. And this is the path that they hurt, but it's help. Yeah, it's yep. help. It hurts, yep. but it helps. Paul, Saul was kicking against what was trying to help him. Yes, he was. Hard. And listen, I'm telling you like that today. It doesn't matter if you're a sinner or if you're saved by Jesus Christ. That's the way it is today. Jesus, if you're a sinner, He's now poking you. And He's pushing you. He's prodding you along to, Amen. to let Him know. He's trying to let you know to turn your heart over to Him, to humble yourself like we did last night. Yeah. But we humbled ourselves. And I'm telling you, it was the best feeling to sit down and have those brothers come and wash your feet. It gave you a humble feeling. But the thing is, is that there's many today that this little Jesus, as He tries to prod us along, people don't want to pay attention to it. But all Saul, all Saul, what did he do? He knew that light and he knew he what did. he had run into. He <laughs> ran into the Lord. And he said, Oh, what do you want me to do? He didn't even question it. He just said, Oh, what do you want me to do, Lord? What shall I do? What shall I do? And he and the Lord he put a he put um he put scales on his eyes. He did, didn't he? He put scales on his eyes. And I think a lot of times today, there's many people walking around with scales on their eyes and not being able to see the truth. But the thing is, is that you must humble yourself. You must come to the table as a humble little child. You must come as with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, the Bible says. That when you come, He will fill you up That's if right. you come to Him. If you come with a, with a repented heart and ask yeah. Him to come into your life, He will. He wants you to come today. He wants you to come today. Listen, our Lord is the first and the last. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Amen. He's the beginning Amen. and the end. What does that mean? That we're in the middle. And He is the, he's, He created you. And I just pray today that you, that you turn to Him. I, I pray that you turn to Him today. I think about... I think so many times as Christians we... We think about Cornelius and this uh, this thing, this this mat came down. It was it was a, a mat that came down, and and you know um, I don't know where I'm going with this today, and I I'm just going to tarry just a little bit. It's going to tarry just a little bit, and you know um, it's just on my mind. But sometimes we look at this church house, we look at this church house, and and we say that this one's better than that. Right, but no, it's not that way. And you know the thing is, is that Peter, Peter even saw it this way at this time. He he said, "There's common and there's unclean." And uh, he had a vision, and in this vision, this this vision that came to him, and he said, "Oh no, Lord!" He goes, "I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take from an unclean." He goes, "I've always ate of the clean." And, and uh, you know, it went on and on. And the thing is, is that he had this vision and it came down and, and the Lord showed him these animals. And he said, I can't, I can't eat of these animals, Lord. And that's what Peter said. But the, the thing is, is that uh, the Lord showed him, did he not? He showed him, he showed him in a vision. He said, now listen, he says, you need to go. You need to go to Cornelius' house. Who is this man, Cornelius? He's the first, the first Christian. The first was outside of Jerusalem. He was a Gentile, they say. And you know that he was a man that he prayed with his whole heart. And the Bible says he prayed continuously. Yep. He, he was an upright man that constantly seeked the Lord. And listen, I don't even know that he knew what Jesus was at that time. But listen, he kept seeking the Lord. He kept seeking Him. And he also received the vision that he got. Yeah, he and that's what you got to do today. If you don't know the Lord, it's hard to know if you don't know Him. But the thing is, is if you keep seeking and you keep praying, He will show you. He will show you who He is. And just like Cornelius, He came, He had a vision, and God showed Him. He said, call, have one of your soldiers go and get this man Peter. And He did, and Peter came, and Peter, uh, Peter came, and when He came, He started to preach the Gospel to him. He didn't say too much. It didn't seem like there was much there. The work had already been done. 
God had shown him who this man was, and he said, bring Peter. And I'm sure when Peter showed up, he was impressed. He knew that the Lord had guided him in the right way. And I tell you, it's like that today for us. It's like that today for us. Sometimes you'll pray and sometimes you'll feel something. And sometimes there's somebody that will show you something. And that's exactly what happened with Cornelius. Cornelius, he came and Peter came and Peter preached the gospel. He said, listen, this is Jesus who died on the cross for us. And Cornelius, all he did is he believed. That's it. He believed the word. He believed the vision. He believed the testimony that was given to him. And when he did, he was saved. But the thing is, is there's many in that time that, that got saved also. I think I'm going to sit there. So listen, this is the most important decision that you're going to make today. This is the most important thing that you can do with your heart is to turn to Jesus. Uh, there's nothing There's nothing more important in this world. Nothing at all, brothers. Get this all the way. I just, uh, Page 120. I just pray today that you, you turn your heart to Jesus. He's, he's the best thing that you can do. He'll show you the way. He'll show you that He's the life, the truth. He loves you so much today. Not just the least of these, but these brothers here. Hope that you consider these things.